This is a build I've been kind of itching to do for a while. Um, it's kind of the, uh, the best of the best of the best of these components. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty much, it's not the latest and greatest and newest stuff, but from, the, from each of their generations, the parts that I'm going to use are some of the best. Um, so what this is going to be is a... Well, originally it was going to be an i7-975 Extreme. Um, but, as I was uh, going through another machine, business-grade machine that I bought earlier today, um, I realized that that machine actually had a 3.46 gigahertz, 6-core uh, Xeon, I think it's a W... Mm, 5960 something, something like that, whatever it is, I can't remember, 59, oh crap, I can't remember, but it's, it's the, uh, it's the direct Xeon equivalent to the i7-990 Extreme, which is the fastest chip that you can possibly get for this, uh, for this socket, it doesn't get any faster than that, um, Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say it's just as fast as the latest and greatest new stuff um, like some folks like to do, but it will still hold its own against a lot of surprisingly newer hardware. This build, once it's done, so it's going to be, it's going to be the 6-core Xeon with 12 gigs of RAM and a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780. And this thing's a monster 780. This is not a normal 780. This is this is a monster 780. Pretty much all the parts in this system are large, impressive-looking parts. That's that's what I'm going for with this build. I want a big, monster, impressive system. Even if it's not the latest and greatest hardware, I want a monster of a system with this build. Okay, looks like. I got this really powerful light, and I'm seeing a little bit of dust in this that I missed. Got most of it, but eh, a little bit of a little bit of it I missed. That's why my pet peeves. I want my systems once they're done to be as close to dust-free as you can possibly get a pre-owned case. So this is a uh, Cooler Master Cosmos 1000, which is one of the finest pieces of case gear that came out of the uh, mid to late 2000s craze when really high-end gaming desktops were really starting to become a thing at that point. That was when the, the super powerful video cards were really starting to take off. Super powerful processors were really starting to take off. The whole idea of doing what we do with these systems kind of originates from that time period. So um, this is one of the nicer cases to come out of that time period. It's still a classic, awesome case. Looks great. Looks a little dated, but it, it's still a good looking case. It's big. It has tons of space, tons of hard drive. Uh, I've got them removed, but there's like six hard drive bays here that are going to go in. It's got tons of fan mounting points. It's just, it's the perfect case for a monster build such as this. I have already pre-tested most of this hardware, so we're not going to have... This is not going to be one of those situations where I start working on the build and it turns out to be a totally different build. Um, this is a largely pre-tested build, so... I did... Um, <clears throat> this size we got here. Sweet. Um... Yeah, this is something you come across a lot. I've never, I don't think I've mentioned it in my builds before. When you're looking at these these screw brackets, or we call them standoffs, there's two different sizes. One of them takes these, which are uh, uh, what are these? These are hard drive. Hard drives use one size screw, and uh, CD drives use another size. This one is using the larger hard drive base screws. But the uh, the lar the smaller CD drive optical drive size is just as common. So if you have a situation where you're trying to screw into the into the standoff and you cannot get the screw to go in, or you go to screw into the standoff 
and it's really loose. It doesn't actually screw in very well. It doesn't give you much retention force. Um, that typically is mean. It typically is going to mean that you have either an oversized or you have too large or too small of screws for the standoff. The biggest problem is that if you use, um, well, if you use too large of, or I'm sorry, if you use, how do you say that? Um, if you use the too large of screws in the smaller standoffs, sometimes you can force them in. And I, I see that quite a bit when I, when I pick systems up from other people, they clearly got a situation where they forced the standoffs in. And then what ends up happening is when you remove the screws, when you go to pull the board out, if you ever have to remove the board, the standoffs come with it. And then you have to use a pair of pliers around back be behind the board to uh, remove the, uh, to hold the standoffs while you remove them. Which is not the end of the world. It's not hard to do. It's just one of those things that falls into the category of doing it right. I guess it depends on the system. I mean, if, if it's depending on the way the case is laid out, a large case like this is not going to be impo is not going to be difficult. But some cases are laid out in such a way where it does present a bit more of a problem than others. Okay. So we used this nice Corsair CX750 power supply, nice newer power supply. And for those that have seen my build videos before or who have seen my, um, my system ad, you know that I individually photograph the components. which is especially useful for buyers who don't really want to watch through these videos. Not all my buyers. I'm actually surprised at how many of my buyers I ask, hey, did you watch the videos? And they said, oh, no. Okay, so i got to flip this here. Let's see if you can still, still see that. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. I guess you can't really see me put the power supply in. I guess we can do this. Let's try moving the phone a bit. Okay, that should provide view of me doing that. Uh, one of the big things you want to do when you're putting the power supply in, especially on larger, nicer cases, they usually have a um, a uh, a grill for the fan, and you want to have that power supply fan facing down so that it's sucking fresh air in and blowing fresh air on the power supply. I guess, again, you don't have to, but falls under the category of doing it right once again. I guess I'm sure I'll probably get a video from someone saying, you say you do it right and you did this wrong and you did that wrong, but... Keep in mind, this is the uh, this is the real world. I don't have some fancy studio like uh, oh, you get uh, you get Linus Tech Tips or who's that other guy? Uh, crap, I can't remember that guy's name. There's another guy too that uh, that does similar to uh, Linus Tech Tips, and they've all got their fancy studio set up. I actually was lucky to even figure out how to put together this powerful light. Okay, so power supply is in. So I don't know if this can be seen in the video. I have the camera in a location where I can't really monitor it. So I'm going to end up getting what I get. But So this one has a long enough... Usually a Corsair... One of the great things I like about Corsair power supplies is they do tend to have sufficiently long cabling for... Um, for running stuff around the back. A lot of power supplies don't, especially when you have a larger case like this. A lot of the power supplies just aren't built with it in mind. So then we 
flip this up. And this has, well, let's see if I can do it. So when you look around the back here, let's see if you can actually see that in the camera. Let me look. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So you can run, so this is your, uh, your motherboard eight pin. So that should fit, it's probably gonna be tight, but it will fit. And then you've got, actually, you know what? Let's see here, did they do it right? This is the one thing I hate about this case. They did a lot of the cable management kind of screwy and you can't actually use I guess the only thing I can really do is see if it works. Either will or it won't. This is the only complaint I have about this case is that the way they designed it is that it looks like you have space back here for running cables, but in fact you don't, and it's just space that's blocked off. But let's see here. I'm pretty sure every one of these that I've done in the past, yeah, see that you can't. I don't think you can do that. Maybe you can. Let's see here. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, that's a shame. That means I have to run it around inside. Which is actually kind of funny because you gotta wonder why they even put this uh this cutout here, because you can't actually use the bloody thing. should work. So you can kind of route it around sometimes around some of these case parts or some of these board parts and actually kind of hold it in place. And then with this one, it's actually going to be completely held in place. That's actually pretty good. This one's going to be completely held in place by the video card once the video card goes right here. Let's do that actually. Let's see. And this is actually pretty rigid. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than some of the, especially the big Asus cards. I've actually seen some of these big Asus cards that are a lot worse than this. I'll probably end up holding the, uh, I'll probably end up holding it in place somehow, but it's actually not that bad the way it's situated as it sits.
<clears throat> so as you can see, I did strip all the fans out. Um, it will have fans in it when it's done. I'm probably not going to show installation of the fans in the video. It's usually the very last thing I do after I've built the system in the box and determined exactly what the fan needs are as far as what, what kind of cooling you're going to need. Um, it's not always entirely apparent when you first start the build what you're actually going to need once everything's in the box. Tempted. See here. So if anyone actually watches this through and listens to this commentary, um, let me know what you guys think about the quality of the video. I was looking at a couple of different options a few months back for video quality, and um, I, wanted, I wanted high quality, and I wanted to eventually be able to do 4K, and what I'm shooting with the, this with right now can do 4K, I just, I've only played around with it at 1080p. Um, I was originally looking at <clears throat> maybe something like, uh, like, I, like I've already got a DSLR, and I really, I mean, I know the newer ones are supposed to be a little better on it, but I've never really liked shooting video with a DSLR. I, I really don't. I, people might tell me I'm just being stupid, but I don't know. There's, then you gotta get a whole, you can use the same lenses, but realistically to get the, because you do different things with video than you do with still, and so then I'd have to go get... I guess I could. Oops. I guess I can do that. That's one way to support it. We can uh, run this around the back. And then I can zip tie that in place. I don't know how well you can see this on the video, but I'm running the already cable tied video card connector around the back here. And then once I, oh, that might, oh, yeah, that might work. We'll see. It's tight, but I kind of wanted it tight. That, oh, yeah, you know what? That's actually perfect. Little tighter than ideal, but tight is good in this case because that is going to keep my video card. And it's, you don't have to do it, but with big cards like this, you do run the risk of damaging either the board or the card, especially long term. And what you'll see with some of these cards is when you get these big uh, uh, aftermarket cooler cards, um, when you get these big aftermarket cooler cards, you'll sometimes actually see like permanent bending to the PCB or even the metal backplate in some cases that's typically caused by the weight of the card, because some of these cards weigh several pounds. So anyway, with the video, what I ended up... Oh yeah, that'll hold that in place. Perfect. Um, what I ended up doing for the video is, it's actually, I'm shooting with a Galaxy S9 Plus smartphone. And um, I've got a... I've got a big... Um, I call it my studio light that I uh, that I have out in the distance. It's kind of over there. It's probably it's probably like three feet that direction, and it's shining down. It's a four thousand lumen custom built Cree assembly I put together a few months ago as a custom 
uh, Wachimajigger, a custom, uh, is that light? That's interesting. Um, kind of a custom light just for whatever use. I'll probably build something different here pretty quick, but for now it does the job. Okay, let's see here. Where do we want to do this? To make it work the way I wanted, you do have to kind of make your own custom mount. I couldn't really find any mounts that I was happy with. Um, but once I had my custom mount made, it, it was it works great. Because I'm using, I'm not using the, uh, the user-facing camera. I'm using the main camera on the back because it's the high quality I wanted. So I had to come up with a custom mounting bracket so that I could point it at the item that I'm filming, but it does mean I'm not really able to adjust or actually see. So whatever, <clears throat> whatever I end up getting is what I get. I can't really alter the video and I can't really see what's actually visible. So every now and then I keep having to look back and see what exact angles are being caught with it. To be honest, I really wish manufacturers didn't set drive bays up like this. I don't know why why so few manufacturers, or why it's only in usually cheaper cases where they have um, where they have just straight up screw holes in these set up for just screwing the hard drive straight in for the size of the drive. For whatever reason, you only seem to see that on cheap, crappy cases. But I really wish more high end cases went that direction. Okay, so, sorry for the sniffles here. One of the uh, tricks that we like to use with this, yes, let's see here. Yeah, let's see. Some of the things we like to do is use double stick foam tape. Most mid-range SSDs don't really put out that much heat, so you can get away with it. I've actually even seen a lot of people trying to use super glue with it, which I used to do that, but I found that it was too big of a pain in the butt, and super glue goes everywhere, it's a nightmare, and on top of that, what ends up happening is if for whatever reason you have to remove it later, super glue doesn't like to be removed, and so it does have a tendency from what I have seen to uh, risk basically cracking the uh, the SSD. This is also a great trick if you're in a situation where you've got um, uh, like a laptop and you don't have the original um, hard drive caddy. It is definitely a great option for that as well.
I guess in theory you could provide an upgrade problem to the buyer, but I've never had anyone actually complain about it, so... I guess you can't really see what I'm doing here. Let's try this. Oh, put the. There we go. So these kind of screw in with individual thumb holes. And back to my complaints on the. Uh, the cable management capabilities of the uh, the one of the Cosmos 1000. It's it's a great case. It's just like I said. It's it was kind of in the first round of really really high end cases when this really when the idea of super high end gaming computers was kind of in its infancy at that point. So what what system builders like myself actually need. For these systems or for these cases hadn't really been established you know like I said leave if anyone sees the video and has any comments on the quality feel free to comment but so far I've been impressed with the uh, with the s9 plus with the actual video quality and this isn't even with the 4k I haven't even messed around with the 4k yet So typically, on a build like this, I'm going to run, since I don't actually need them, I'm going to run all the cables that I don't need through this cable hole right here. And uh, that'll keep everything out of the way that needs to be out of the way that I don't want to see in the actual build. Typically, on a build like this, I'm going to need... Two strands of SATA, because usually the CD drive on a big case like this, newer, smaller cases, I don't usually put them in just because they're not always set up for it. But on an older case, because it's actually set up for a CD drive, I usually include one. But um, so I'll need two SATA, and the, the, uh, the drive, usually whatever they have set up for the CD drive, is usually in a totally different portion of the case. And so you need one of these Molec or one of these SATA strands to go up to there, and then one of them to go, um... You actually can't really see very well there, can you? Let's see if I can move this a little. Okay. I'll give you a little more. So... Let's see here. So yeah, what I'm going to do... Let's see if I can put this where people can see it. There we go. Okay, so usually what we do here is zip tie them together and then just kind of lay them flat. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of manipulation. Um, um, at, when you go to put the, uh, the case side panel on, which sucks a little, but it is what it is.
actually, ooh, that actually fits in too. That'll actually work perfect. That's about as best as it's gonna get. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop this right now. Uh, it's about 3 in the morning working on this. I'm going to start start this again in the, uh, in the afternoon when I go to work on it again tomorrow and uh, finish this build up. Okay, so continuing right where I left off on this last night. like I may actually be genuinely in danger of running out of zip ties, which is no good. I use tons of zip ties on these things. I probably use, I bet, I'm going a little light on them this time just because I'm almost out, but I bet a normal build that I do is upwards of 100 zip ties. I mean, it's a ton of them. Let's see here. Okay, so with this build, or this case, it's got um, case mounted 1394 and case, which is Firewire, sorry, those of us that deal with this stuff call it 1394, but common people normally call it Firewire, but I'm going to hide the cabling for that and the eSATA. eSATA and Firewire are pretty much dead. You're really, you might see an eSATA somewhere, but same with Firewire, but for the most part, they are both effectively dead. Pretty much any external um, external device interface has pretty much all been replaced by USB 3. Especially now with like USB 3.1, USB C, those kind of formats, it's just I think a lot more useful than the other options ever were. Okay. So normally the way I do this is I, once I get it like that, I flip it over and take a look and see where the closest access points are for, um, for running those cables through. So I have the smallest amount of, um, cabling that I need to hide. So it looks like we've got our typical So 
as always, it looks like front panel audio is in the lower corner of the motherboard. It pretty much always goes there. And I wonder. <clears throat> Actually, unfortunately. You can't, so like I was explaining last night, normally we would run this over and then through the access hole there, but because of the really stupid way they did this, you literally can't put anything. So this is for anybody that's looking at building a, a system in the, uh, the, uh, the Cosmos 1000, this is probably the biggest complaint is you can't actually run stuff right here because when you put the, uh, the, uh, the back panel on it, it lays, it actually inserts into this, and then you get a bulge, and I mean, I guess you could probably force it, but I guess I'll try. Let's see. Let's try putting it on and just seeing if it'll let me do it. I think I can't, though. But let's try it. Okay. So start with doing that. Oops. Dang it. I guess these single cables might be thin enough to do it, but anything more than that definitely will not work. And it's also worth noting with the, uh, the Cosmos 1000, even if everything is perfectly the way it should be, um, it's actually still a comparatively difficult... Oh, okay, so that's going to work. Looks like I can get away with something that's that. Oh, maybe not. Let's see if it'll let me... Yeah, this has always been a difficult case to actually latch shut. The latching mechanism has just always been, on the 1000, it's just always been less than it could or should be. Okay, so it looks like I can actually get away with it, at least to a degree. Oh, that's for those. Okay, yeah, I guess I can get away with it. Let's see here. So this is pretty typical of um, of placement for <clears throat> for uh, front panel audio. It's pretty much always, with rare exception, I think. Um, I think either MSI. Dang, that does not want to do. Okay, there we go. MSI or Gigabyte. I think it's Gigabyte likes to put theirs up right there, which is a little odd. But other than that, they pretty much every motherboard manufacturer has standardized this location. Let's see here, see if I can get my light. Uh, trying to make as much of this one visible as physically possible. Looks like we can run USB kind of through there. Oh, 
looks like I already did. And that's special. This is kind of unusual. This one has two for, so each of these is a total of two USB ports. So this actually has four front mounted USB ports, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> this one I'm gonna use a little bit of duct tape just to hold this. Once I, once I put the back panel on, it won't matter anymore, but it, <clears throat> it should prevent from having to give two or three tries to the back panel install. That'll help hold that in as well. Most newer cases have various, um, something like, uh, can that be seen? I guess you can't really see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, these right here, these little hoops, you can usually, on newer cases, you've got those all over here. But like I said, this case was kind of built before it was really realized what system builders needed to be able to build clean systems like this. So I can move the light a little bit closer. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Nice. Yeah, that's the biggest difference in uh, image quality is more light. And I think it's it's gonna be the same in both still and video. Um, obviously the more light I get on it, the, within reason, I guess there's probably too much, but I haven't yet found it. So one of these Molex, or sorry, not Molex, uh, SATA strands is going to go up, and one of them is going to go back behind. Let's see if I can uh, move the camera a little here. Ugh. Okay, that should be. Oh yeah, nice.
Okay, so now I gotta go dig out a <clears throat> CD drive. That's actually gonna work pretty nice. I'm digging this. So this last set of Molex that I'm running, I don't think you can really see it, I'll lay the computer flat in a minute, is for connecting fans to. So it appears that I can run better to having those kind of in the center. So I can run, the, the cables to fans are so small that I can run them back here without a problem. So I'll probably have fan cabling run back here. One of the things I usually do too is I pull these off. These can be a big pain in the ass when you are trying to seal one of these fairly tight cases up. And 
that allows me to lay these flat, which definitely mitigates a lot of issues you would otherwise have to deal with. <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend using duct tape as a structural item that actually holds the system together, but in a situation like this, where it's a really tight case and everything has to line up just right for it to close without bulging, um, it is a great way to keep it all how you want it until it closes. Once it's closed, it doesn't matter because it'll hold itself in place. <clears throat> okay, so all we need now is SATA cables for the three devices. So let's see if this still wants to close. Actually, it's actually one of the more painless close-ups I've ever experienced. I'm going to wash this too when I'm done. Not all, but a lot of this kind of stuff will come out of the aluminum. Okay, so... Looks like... We're going to work perfectly. <clears throat> so I apologize for anyone that doesn't appreciate the narration. The primary purpose of these videos is for buyers to get an idea of what I'm doing when I'm building these rigs. So this board actually, even though it's an older board, does have two SATA 3.0. So I'm going to hook the two hard drives up to the two SATA 3.0s. And then our CD drive obviously can go to anything. This has three PCI Express uh, X16s. I don't know if they all actually run at X16, but um, it does have three of them. And then it also has <clears throat> eight total SATA ports and uh, two with a, with a full-size video card in it. It has one accessible standard uh, legacy PCI and one accessible uh, uh, PCIe 1.0, which even though it's an older system, that does make this an incredibly expandable system. 
and this I believe I'm 99% sure that this board does support uh, SLI. So you could drop another one of these cards in. And also worth noting is that the in this case, if this were just a standard i7-920 build, uh, it would just be an old outdated system. But with this processor in it, um, it, it, plus it's, it's upgradable to 24 gigs of RAM. So if, and most of those upgrades are cheap. So if you put, say, say a little more RAM in it, um, you would be able to drop something like a, like a 1070, 1080 card on here, and it would still be a potent gaming system. Again, I'm not going to sit here and claim that a six core X58 base build is going to be as fast as an 8,700 K or something ridiculous like that. I see it all the time. It's obviously not, but it is a sufficient processor. Um, and it, it, it is a fast enough system um, with those specs that you absolutely could put a newer card in here and you would get surprisingly good performance out of, out of the system with a newer card. <clears throat> okay, so let's flip this back over. I'm going to have to pop it open one more time, unfortunately, which really unfortunate because these are, again, a pain in the butt, but... Oh, gosh! Hide the cables back here. Okay, so this is technically done as far as as far as what I'm going to show on video. Um, there's a few more little things, but it's mostly software related stuff that I'm going to put in um, in obviously game demo videos, which there will be game demo videos for this system. Um, as I typically say, uh, look for the game demos closest to this upload. I'm not going to put links to them because they're literally going to be right next to this upload. I'm going to upload. I'll probably upload this video first, and then I'll probably spend the rest of the night tonight making uh, game demo videos, which will probably be up either sometime before I go to bed in the early a.m. or uh, sometime during the day tomorrow. Um, so let me flip this back over just so you can get kind of a, a final, final look at what we got put together here. Okay. So, I guess the only other thing I can really do with this is run, oops, run zip ties around here just to clean it up just a little. This build, the final, the final sold system, is going to be priced somewhere in the neighborhood of four seventy-five to uh, five hundred dollars ish. Um, again, I always acknowledge if you can build this yourself and you're willing to hunt down the parts, you can almost always do it for a little bit cheaper. It's not, it's not like a lot of people like to claim that they can do it like half the price I can. I mean, my prices are not that bad. I mean. I try to I try to price these at about the actual value of the parts, um, and then my ability to make any money on it is based on how good of a deal I got on the parts, not n not a markup based on any of the time or effort I put into it. Um, but uh, for that for that money, I mean it's not a ton of money, but if someone's gonna spend you know, upwards of five hundred dollars on a on a gaming desktop off Craigslist. I want it to I want it to look and feel like they spent five hundred dollars, um, which is why I go to such length with making these cables and every just the overall look of the system totally meticulous, is because I don't want people to feel like they spent five hundred dollars and then they got some old outdated piece of crap. 
So I choose the components that should be in it based on the price of the system, and I put the level of quality into the build itself that it should be, again, based on the price of the system. Um, if anybody has any uh, questions on this build, uh, feel free to message me um, in the, the comments. Keep in mind, I do find that I tend to get lots of comments after a system's already long sold and gone, so do keep that in mind if if you message me, you know, three weeks, three months down the road, this unit is probably already gone. Usually when I sell these, uh, usually they sell within days because I sell over a fairly wide area. If not days, I mean, I don't typically have a machine for longer than three weeks a month. I usually try to move them within the month. So, um, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to message me and I uh, hope everybody found this video informative and uh, thanks for watching.